All right, Deputy Ingram, I understand all of our jurors are here at this point in time. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. All right, if we could summon our jurors for us, please, and uh, Deputy Ingram, if you would have them, as we talked about earlier, not everybody except the last row. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, hey. Is everybody here? Everybody present? This is Shark coming here. All right, well, I'm okay, I'm worried about him right now, okay? But, all right. George President Council. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. All right, all jurors present? Yes, sir. All right, okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Good morning. Oh, come on, that sounds like lame. Come on. All right, let's try that again. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Oh, much better, much better. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, I'm Chief Judge Earl Glanville, and I'm presiding over the trial of this case. And at this point in time, I'm going to introduce my chamber staff. Um, in the courtroom, I have my court reporter. Ms. Christina Weaver, uh, she's my official court reporter. And then to my right, your left, is Ms. Violetta Omana, who's my judicial assistant. To my left, immediate left, is Mr. Wesley Kearns. Uh, he's my staff attorney. Uh, and then the gentleman who just brought you out is uh, 
Sergeant Tim Ingram. So, and then I have another litigation manager upstairs, Edward Chamberlain, uh, and you'll meet him at some point in time if you haven't met him already when you were here before. So, as I mentioned earlier, they're here to assist me and will be happy to help you in any way you can. Um, your principal point of contact, should you be running late or anything should happen to you or you need to kind of reach us before the time period, I understand one of you had a car issue this morning. So that's the, you all still have my cards? Okay, and if you don't, I'll give, I got plenty more. We'll give, we'll give you some before you leave today. If you're gonna be running late or anything, please contact uh, Ms. Umana and let her know so that I can kind of keep track of you and I can let the parties know where you are. But it is very important that you all get here on time. We were supposed to start at nine o'clock this morning. It's now almost 10.30. So it just, I can't do anything until all 18 of you are here. So please mind your time. Only you know how long it takes you to get from wherever you live in our great county downtown Fulton County, I mean, to the courthouse and all the machinations that you have to go through. So leave early. You can always come a little bit earlier and, and uh, be comfortable and be seated in your in your headquarters or your deliberation room, okay? All right, but at any point in time during recesses, you can approach my staff or, as I mentioned earlier, um, any of the people from our sheriff's department who are in the gray and black uh, uniforms, you can, you're authorized to talk with them. Before we uh, get into preliminary instructions, ladies and gentlemen, I have some administrative matters to discuss with you. I've already introduced my staff, and I encourage you to, to approach them if you have questions. Remember, uh, the sheriff's deputies have shown you how to get to the jury room, how you arrive here every day. Okay, so you're never to come in the front door of the courtroom. You always go in to the rear and go directly into your headquarters or your deliberation room. And from this point on, you're not gonna enter the courtroom until unless one of the deputies brings you out from the jury room. After breaks and beginning of the day, when you arrive, you'll go straight to the jury room. And our deputies, as you mentioned earlier, when you were here a little bit earlier, gave you the nickel tour of the courthouse. So all of you know how to get from the front entrance up here to the your headquarters, is that right? Okay, we talked a little bit about orientated about, about meals and how you can, uh, there's a cafeteria that's uh, directly behind you. We talked a little bit about that. Since you were here, you like the space back there? Yes. It no longer looks like a dump. <laughs> we painted it, Thank got you some fresh tables, chairs, and uh, some, a, refri a couple of refrigerators, a microwave, a coffee pot, and we'll make sure that we, uh, we go ahead and, and make sure that is cleaned and maintained for your use. I want you to be very comfortable while you're in there. But um, as I mentioned to you earlier, it might be better just to bring your lunch or bring your comfort items, but we'll make sure that you have some place to store them and uh, otherwise can warm up your lunch if you feel necessary. All right, I would ask that you wear your juror stickers when you're here in the courthouse, and all of you have juror stickers, wonderful. If you don't, when you go back in there, put one on, and remember at the end of the day, take one, put it in your wallet, your purse, your briefcase, whatever you may have, and put it on when you come back in the courtroom, uh, in, in the courthouse. This is so the lawyers and the witnesses can identify you as a juror. From this point on, the lawyers, the parties, the witnesses, or anyone else associated with this case, except for my staff, or the, our sheriff's deputies, was prohibited from having any contact with you whatsoever. If you happen to encounter any one of them on the street or in the elevator, Please do not attempt to communicate with them in any way and do not be offended, as I mentioned to you earlier, if they ignore you, okay? They're just adhering to their responsibilities and roles as officers of this court to not have any direct or incidental contact with you. So um, please don't uh, be offended. Uh, if you should some reason have contact with one of the lawyers or if you inadvertently overhear something about this case, please notify one of my deputies or my staff immediately. Now this also, ladies and gentlemen, pertains to third parties or anybody else that may try and talk with you. Um, if anybody else, other than the folks I told you about the lawyers, attempts to talk with you in any way, emails you, texts you, tries to communicate with you when you're, when you're going to and from, we need to know about it immediately, okay? So please tell me if that uh, should happen. We generally hold court from 9 a.m. to about 6 p.m. or thereabouts. Um, 
We'll take some short comfort breaks as needed throughout the day and a longer break for lunch. And for the sake of your fellow jurors and, and the parties, as I mentioned earlier, please make every effort to be on time as we cannot begin or continue the case until all 18 of you are present. If something unexpected happens and you absolutely cannot help being late, please call my office and contact Ms. Umana and she'll let me know and let us know accordingly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now, I'm going to cover some basic principles of criminal law. I'm going to explain my role, your role, and the lawyer's roles. And then finally, I'm going to tell you how the, how the trial will proceed. Since many of you haven't served on a jury before, so this should help you in understanding how a trial proceeds and what is expected of you during the trial. Now, you've been selected and sworn to try the following. The criminal case of the state of Georgia versus Marquavius Huey, the Fulton County Grand Jury has indicted the defendant, Marcavius Huey, with the following offenses, which I'll read to you. Conspiracy to violate the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, armed robbery, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, armed robbery, armed robbery, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, Hijacking a motor vehicle in the first degree, possession of a firearm near the commission of a felony, possession of a firearm near the commission of a felony, participation in criminal street gang activity, participation in criminal street gang activity, participation in criminal street gang activity, possession of a weapon by an incarcerated individual, possession of a telecommunication device by an incarcerated individual, and participation in criminal street gang activity. The criminal case of the state of Georgia versus DeMonte Kendrick. The Fulton County Grand Jury has indicted the defendant, Demontre Kendrick, with the following crimes, which I'll read to you now. Conspiracy to violate the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. Murder. Participation in criminal street gang activity. Violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act. Violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act. Violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act. Possession of a firearm and commission of a felony possession of a machine gun, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, previously convicted of a felony in involving the use or possession of a firearm. The criminal case of the state of Georgia versus Comarius Nichols. The Fulton County Grand Jury has indicted the defendant, Comarius Nichols, for the following crimes, which I'll read to you now. Conspiracy to violate the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. Murder. Participation in criminal street gang activity participation in criminal street gang activity, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, previously convicted of felony involving the use or possession of a firearm, possession of a firearm in the commission of a felony, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, previously convicted of felony involving the use or possession of a firearm. The criminal case of the state of Georgia versus Rodeus Ryan. The Fulton County Grand Jury has indicted the defendant Rodeus Ryan for the following crime, which I will read to you now, conspiracy to violate the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. The criminal case of the state of Georgia versus Shannon Stilwell. The Fulton County Grand Jury has indicted the defendant Shannon Stilwell for the following crimes, which I will now read to you. Conspiracy to violate the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. Murder, murder, participation in criminal street gang activity. Participation in criminal street gang activity. Possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, previously convicted of felony involving the use or possession of a firearm, possession of a firearm during a commission of a felony, and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, previously convicted of felony involving the use or possession of a firearm. The criminal case of the state of Georgia versus Jeffrey Williams. The Fulton County Grand Jury has indicted the defendant Jeffrey Williams for the following crimes, which I will now read to you. Conspiracy to violate the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act. Participation in criminal street gang activity. Participation in criminal street gang activity. Violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act. Violation of the Georgia Controlled Substances Act. Violation of Georgia Controlled Substances Act, possession of a firearm under the Commission of a Felony, and possession of a machine gun. Each of the defendants have pled not guilty to this indictment, and each of them deny every charge in it. This indictment and the defendants' pleas of not guilty present the issue that you have been selected and sworn to decide. 
The indictment is a way that the defendants are charged with committing crimes that violate the laws of Georgia. The charges in the indictment and the pleas of, of not guilty are not evidence of guilt, and you may not conclude that the defendants are guilty based on the charges or the, or the not guilty pleas. Each of the defendants is presumed to be innocent until, it, until he is individually proven guilty. The defendants begin the trial with a presumption of innocence in their favor, and this presumption stays with them until it is overcome by the state with evidence that convinces you beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendants are guilty of the crimes charged. You may not convict any one of the defendants of any crime unless each element of the crime is proved beyond a reasonable doubt. The burden of proof is on the state to prove every essential element of the crimes charged in the indictment beyond a reasonable doubt. The defendants have no burden at all, and the burden never shifts to any one of the defendants to prove his innocence. However, the state is not required to prove the guilt of the defendants beyond all doubt or to a mathematical certainty. A reasonable doubt means just what it says. It is a doubt of a fair-minded, impartial juror who is honestly seeking the truth. It is a doubt based upon common sense and reason. It does not mean a vague or arbitrary doubt, but is a doubt for which you can give a reason based on a consideration of the evidence or a lack of evidence, a conflict in the evidence, or any combination of these. After considering all the facts and circumstances of this case, if your minds are wavering, unsettled, or unsatisfied, then that is a doubt of the law, and you must find the defendants not guilty. But if no reasonable doubt exists in your minds about the defendant's guilt, then you may convict the defendants. If the state does not prove the defendant's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, your duty would be to find the defendants not guilty. My role is to determine the law that applies to this case. Then I will instruct you on the law that you must apply to the facts in reaching a verdict. I'm giving you some of those instructions now. I will give you more detailed instructions at the end of the trial. The jury has a very important role. You must decide the facts of the case from the evidence presented and then apply the law that I give you to those facts. Evidence is how a fact is proved or disproved. Evidence can be either testimonial or exhibits. Testimony is what you'll hear from people who take the witness stand right here and swear to tell the truth. However, the questions the lawyers ask the witnesses are not evidence. Exhibits are documents, photographs, and other physical items that are admitted during trial. The object of this trial is to discover the truth. During the trial, I will admit evidence according to the rules of evidence. Those rules are designed to aid in the discovering the truth by making sure that you consider only the best and highest evidence. The lawyers are advocates for their clients and they have the duty to represent their clients to the best of their ability. They must follow the rules of law, trial procedure, and evidence during the trial. They may make motions or objections if they believe that any rule is not being followed. Remember, what the lawyers say in making or responding to objections is not evidence. I will admit or exclude evidence according to the rules. If the lawyers make an objection and I overrule it, that means the evidence is admitted and you may consider it. On the other hand, if I sustain an objection, this means the evidence is excluded from the trial and you may not consider it. You should only consider you should consider only that testimony and only those exhibits that are admitted. You should not assume or infer anything about evidence which I have excluded. If you happen to hear or see evidence that I end up excluding from the trial, you must disregard it entirely in your deliberations and in arriving at your verdict. None of my decisions and nothing I say during the trial are evidence. My decisions and remarks do not mean that I favor or lean to one side or another in this case. I am only interested in seeing that this case is fairly tried based upon the laws and constitution of the state of Georgia and the constitution of the United States. 
Sometimes I may deal with, have to deal with the lawyer's motions or objections without you being here in the courtroom, and if so, I'll excuse you from the jury room. So what I'll say, ladies and gentlemen, is, ladies and gentlemen, there's a matter we need to take up if you retire to your headquarters or jury liberation room, and I'll wait for other instruction. That's my most artful way of telling you we need to take up something outside your presence and hearing, okay? I'll try and limit those interruptions, and I ask that you be patient when they do happen. I can't tell you when those will happen, but sometimes they do. Um, so please be, I'll ask for your patience in advance on that particular matter. So the trial will proceed as follows. First, the attorneys may give what's called opening statements. No attorney is required to make an opening statement. Opening statements are not evidence. They're simply an introduction to the evidence, a preview or an outline of the expected evidence. The state goes first because they have the burden of proof. Second, the evidence will be presented. Third, the lawyers may give closing arguments or summations. They may discuss the law that applies to this case and how you should consider the law in light of the evidence. They may also point out evidence that they believe supports their position. What the lawyers say in closing arguments is not evidence. The goal of a closing argument is to persuade you to decide the case in their favor. Fourth, then I will explain to you the specific law that applies to this case. This is referred to as charging the jury. I will then ask you to go to the jury room, your headquarters, to deliberate and to reach your verdict. It is important that you pay close attention during this trial. If at any time you cannot hear or see any evidence or you're suffering from any discomfort that distracts you, please inform me or one of my deputies or my team and we'll do whatever is needed to make sure you can hear and see the evidence and give it your undivided attention. If you need a break at any point in time, please raise your hand or alert our, one of our deputies. The jurors are not allowed to question witnesses. However, if you have a question you believe is important for your determination of facts, please write down your question, give it to one of the deputies, and I will determine whether or not it should be asked. If you have a question while the evidence is being presented, please keep in mind that you do not yet heard all of the evidence and your question may be answered by the time the rest of the evidence has been presented. You should only consider evidence with an op or you should consider the evidence with an open mind and you should not reach any final conclusions until the trial is over. Do not jump to conclusions before all the evidence is presented. To maintain the integrity of the jury system, I'm going to remind you again, remember my ad nauseum admonitions there? Okay, y'all shaking your heads like, okay, we're going to go through those one more time. I'm going to remind you that you must disguise this case only based on the evidence admitted during the trial and the law I will explain to you. You may not conduct any research on your own about this case or about any people or places mentioned during the trial. You may not visit any places mentioned in the evidence. You may not refer to any books or documents that were not admitted during the trial. You may not use any dictionaries or other reference materials. You may not use Google or any other search engines or any other resource matters, uh, the internet, websites, or blogs. You may not use any other electronic media to get information about this case. You should not use any of the sources to get any information about the legal terms or about the law. And finally, you may not listen to any accounts of this trial that may appear in the news media, whether it's online, in print, on the radio, on your cell phones, or any other smart devices that you may have, or any other mediums. Remember, you are the ones that have been qualified as fair and impartial jurors deciding this case. No other influence should affect your decision. For that reason, as I mentioned earlier, part of my admonitions, you may not discuss this case with anyone, including your family and friends, or, do, or let anyone discuss this case with you or around you or in your presence. This includes discussing or sharing information by email, text, blogging, or other form of social media until actual deliberations begin. That is, until after you've heard all the evidence, the lawyer's closing arguments, the law that applies to this case, 
You must not discuss the case even amongst yourselves in the jury room during breaks or other, or elsewhere. Remember I told you, would it be a violation for you to sit back in your headquarters jury deliberation room after we take the first witness and say, hey, what do you think? Is that a violation? Yes. Come on now. We all got to kind of shake our heads. Yes. Would it be a violation for you to be, as you're walking to lunch to, to recap and discuss the case? Yes. What about you in the bathroom? Yes. That's creepy. Remember I told you about that before? Okay, all right. So we're not going to do that, all right? But what about going to the jury shuttle? Yeah, yeah that would be a violation as well, okay? What about if you're walking on Wednesdays and Tuesdays? Yes. All right, okay. And how did I tell you you're probably going to get caught if you violate my admonitions? Yes. You're going to tell on yourself. That's right. Or somebody's going to tell me that you've been on some particular site or some particular issue. Y'all you know, are going to learn that. Okay, I'm proud of you. All right. But it's really important, ladies and gentlemen, because remember I told you, fair trial, just trial, lawful trial. So all of these things are really important in terms of the admonitions and how serious we are about you not being only hearing what's in this courtroom and only the cases presented to you. All right? So... You've been given pencils and writing utensils and pads for your note-taking and use during this trial. So what I want you to do at this point in time is take uh, and open your pad to the very first page. Uh, we, 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 for those of you that have them, okay? For the rest of you, I'm going to get you a pad, all right? Does everybody have a pad? No. Okay. Okay. All right. Who else doesn't have a pad? Do we have enough, or we we would we'll get we'll get you one during the break. What I need you to do with all of you that have pads, go ahead and write your name on the very first page. Okay, that's your that's your pad. Okay, so um, so whenever you come back in, each after breaks and everything else, um, don't if you're going to your headquarters, just leave your pad inside the basket. Okay, we're not going to take a look at it, and nobody's going to bother with it. Who else needs a pad? Everybody got a writing utensil, pen, or or pen or or pencil. Okay, for those of you, go ahead and who just got passed, go ahead and write your name on the very first page, inside cover. Just go ahead and write your name on. That's your, and believe me, we have more pads. So if you get, you know, by the time the trial ends, if you need another pad, we will give you another one. Okay. So, but leave them in your headquarters when you have breaks and go outside and for the end of the day, just put them in there. Uh, take another juror sticker out, and that'll be kind of your kind of the, your way to kind of just trade and make sure don't take them home with you. Um, then the next morning, you can find your pad, and you can kind of just be prepared to take notes, okay? So um, I'm going to tell you, tell you that again. Just leave your pads as you have breaks and everything else in your headquarters. And at the end of the day, like I said before, we will secure your notes. Probably, that'll probably be Miss Umana's job, and we'll just leave them in the basket, and we put the basket in your location, and then um, we bring the basket back down so you all, when you come back tomorrow morning, or whatever morning you come back, you'll have your have your notepad, all right? Now, but please keep in mind, all right? You may take notes if you wish. If you do take notes, please do not your note, let your note-taking distract you from paying full attention to all the evidence and the witnesses. You may not share or discuss your notes with anyone until you start deliberating at the end of the case, and I tell you how you're to begin your deliberative process. Notes are not evidence. They're only memory aids. They are not more important than your own impression or memory of what the evidence may have been. You may consider another juror's notes to refresh your memory 
you should only rely on your own memory of the proceedings. Do not be influenced by the notes of other jurors unless they unless their notes help you in determining your own independent memory. You must leave your notes in the jury room except when you are in the courtroom. They will be collected by the court and destroyed at the end of, after you finish your deliberations. Ladies and gentlemen, you will not get a transcript of any witness testimony, so please remember what they said on the witness stand in a way that works best for you. Okay? I'm going to... So... I'm going to tell you a couple other administrator, or as, as I call, administeria. Ladies and gentlemen, I've tried a lot of jury cases, so some of the things I'm going to say to you are the result of debriefing a lot of other of our citizens. One of the questions I get on a routine basis is, Judge, what are you doing up here on the bench? All right? So I'm going to demystify that, and I'm going to tell you right now. So there won't be any... question about what you're about what I'm doing okay all right so as you can as I told you earlier I'm responsible for just about everything that goes on in this courtroom so on the bench here I do have a phone and I can make certain phone calls I need to these devices here ladies and gentlemen you're gonna see us use them from time to time they are audio devices that each pair of litigants has on their table to allow them to hear bench conferences because I may have to take up things out you know, that, that I told you outside your presence in hearing, but we may not want to put you out of the courtroom, so we may come up here, I cut my microphone off, and everybody using these devices is able to hear the bench conference that I'm having. Will you be able to hear a bench conference? No. That's not for you to hear. <laughs> so, but these devices allow us to do that. So if you see people putting on these particular devices to talk, such as this, you'll know that that's what's going on, okay? All right, to my left, I have, I, I do have a computer. I have a couple of different programs that are open that help me do legal research and other things to keep track of what's going on during the trial. And um, otherwise, I'm taking notes. So if you see me typing, don't, don't assume I'm booking my next vacation. I could probably be doing that, but um, I'm not. I do take notes and I do you know, pay attention to what's going on. I, 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 of course, I'm very interested in your um, comfortability and uh, I, I monitor everything that's going on here in the courtroom. So that's what I'm doing up here on the bench, all right? Um, one other thing that you might hear behind me is this bell that starts jingling, all right? And if you hear a jingling sound like a bell, Please don't think that I'm doing anything creepy up here, all right? I have a service dog behind me. His name is Jack. I think some of you may have seen him already. He is, uh, he lives the best life ever. He's pampered. He's really, and, and he's, uh, he's, he's a, he is a Labrador retriever. He's about two, almost two and a half, three years old at this point in time. So, but if you hear that bell, that's him moving around, all right? He doesn't bark. He rarely, might get, he rarely gets interested in what's going on, so he might come up here and look, but that's about it, all right? Don't bring him any food either, okay? All right? He is spoiled rotten, so um, please don't try and throw any food back here behind me or anything like that. He doesn't need anything else, okay? But if you hear that bell, hear that sound, that's, what, that's what's going on behind me, and he'll get up when we have breaks and whatever else. So, um, but that's, that's if you hear the bell, that's Jack. All right. Um, count. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're ready for the lawyers to begin their opening statements. And what we'll do is we'll probably go till probably about 12, 15 or so. And then whatever we don't get done, we'll just continue on at that point in time when we, when you all come back from lunch. Okay? So at this point in time, uh, counsels, I'm going to invoke the rule of sequestration as to both sides. So anybody who's going to give testimony in this case, if you please absent yourself from the courtroom, please don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case. So at this point in time, does the state wish to make an opening statement? The state is withdrawn. All right, go right ahead, madam. Your Honor, I would ask the court regarding um, certain members that we have spoken with the court about in terms of witnesses. Um, we would like to ask the I believe the matter that we discussed, we won't be able to take up till Tuesday. So that person should probably be excluded. Uh, that, the, well, that person, if they're going to. But other than that, I think we've covered everybody else. 
unless there's an exemption. Do you have an exemption to the sequestration? Your Honor, the family members of the victim are exempted from the sale of the only ones that are concerned. I'm not worried. There, there's no issue about sequestration as it applies to them. Thank you, Your Honor. Excuse me, Judge. I have several objections to the court's opening charge. Would you either reserve those? I'll reserve those. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Your Honor, may I please approach the bench? Say again? May I please approach with the state? Yes, Ms. D. Williams. For those of you that wish to listen in, you can go ahead and do so.
No, they should have just. Everybody gets at least one. No. No, they're not. They, they're not on camera, should they? Then cut the camera off. Tell me why to cut that camera off. Okay. Which camera? Is it? Uh, witness. Hmm? Witness. Your Honor, when the court has a moment, can we um, approach again with Ms. D. Williams? You need three minutes, you said? Your Honor, we just need to re-approach again, Your Honor, briefly. Given that we just learned about this, I'm going to exclude it for the time being, okay? Let's just move on. I'll take it up at another time. We're not going to take it up right now. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, given that I have um, provided certain things, I just want to make sure that I comply with the Yeah, we could have taken that thing up an hour, uh, about an hour earlier, but, we, but I, you know, I'll take that issue up later. Okay. 